Osorio. Goes this oh, side. Oh. Aquino finding a way to Whoa! score. Whoa! Jamet Aguilar. Taking it strong and taunting. Joseph Yo goes to his left. Joseph Yo hops, give it a jump. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast is now complete and the seedings have been finalized. Now it's time for the four remaining teams to see action and settle the score as the final four gets underway. We have the same teams in the same positions as last year, but the outcomes could be different this time around. Ladies and gentlemen, up ahead, Ateneo de Manila University squaring off against arch rival, defending champion, De La Salle University in the opening encounter, followed later on by the Far Eastern University taking on the UE Red Warriors at 4 p.m. It is blue versus green in our first game when we come back here on Studio 23. And after all the dilly dallies, after all the playoff matches and replays, we finally come back here at the Big Dome and commence final four proceedings for season 68 of the UAP. Good afternoon, Philippines. We are coming to you live from the Big Dome, the Arenata Coliseum, your mecca of sports and entertainment, live on Studio 23 and everybody watching us on TMC. I'm Boone Gonzalez alongside Coach Ryan Gregorio. We're all excited to start the game and to start the Final Four. Coach, Ateneo has all the disadvantages in the world coming into this game. They lost to La Salle twice, badly at that, and La Salle has had the twice-to-beat advantage nine out of the 11, uh, last 11 times since 1994 and has never squandered that advantage. That's right. Huge win for Ateneo. But if there's one thing that they're thinking about at this point, it has to be survival. They just want to win to live another day. Otherwise, they'll be ending the season without even beating La Salle even for one time. So just take a look at the, what we have right now, the first of prey. Look at the turnovers. I've been talking about this extensively. Yes. In the wins, they've turned the ball over 22.7 times per game when in the losses 24. But the huge disparity really is the opponent's points of the turnovers. Close to six points advantage every time they lose. And against La Salle, those turnover points even matter so much more. As Ateneo is averaging 32.5 over um, uh, La Salle's 32.5 over Ateneo, six points a game. So that will be even more crucial coming into this game. Now, in terms of La Salle, you talk about turnovers. This is a team that loves to force a turnovers and get easy points. This is really the premium in coaching of coach Franz Tomar. And force turnovers, just take a look at the numbers and the turnover points. It's safe to say that if La Salle gets their press going, they will be hard to beat. Now, it's really up for Ateneo de Manila University to do a good job on their press break and force La Salle to play the half-court game. And probably this is their only chance to win against La Salle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. Final four proceedings. Coach Franz Fumarin going for his 110th UAP win, his seventh finals appearance, and his sixth championship with this win today as coach Norman Black is only looking to survive for the next game here in the final four and you're all watching it live on Studio 23. First time here in the Final Four, unsuccessful, and T.Y. Tang will be joined by Joseph Yo, Junjun Kabatu, Ryan Aranya, J.R. Aquino, and Joseph Yo able to get Joseph it up and in Yo. for the first two points of the ball game. Well, expect LaSalle's players, specifically Joseph Yo, who does a good job penetrating to attack because of the absence in the starting lineup of Japet Aguilar. This is the big adjustment on the part of Coach Norman Black, is bringing Japet off the bench. J.C. and Tal 
Couple of possessions of Ateneo going to JC. That one is a forced shot. And JC always has a hard time against Ryan Aranya. Even he admitted that. Talking about Intal, he admitted that Ryan Aranya is his most challenging matchup here in the UAP. Well, Ryan Aranya really does a good job scouting the individual tendencies of JC Intal. But if we take a look at at least the point of attack of coach Norman Black, he wants JC Intal to get into the scoring parade early. In fact, JC took the first two attempts of Ateneo, but unfortunately, his second shot was pretty much like a turnover. So a bad shot is close to a turnover, and you expect Nassal to really score on fast break if situations like that happens a lot of times. Well, a minute gone by. Joseph Gill, first two points of the game. Well, the atmosphere here at the Big Dome is self-explanatory. We don't need to hype up a game like this. Actually, you don't need to hype up the Final Four here in the UAP. The ball will remain with the white shirts. They are undefeated against Ateneo and they would like to keep it that way. Right, Mickey Della? She's joining us for our Samson courtside update. Right, boom, boom, the final four is the time of the UAP season and all the motivational lines are dug up and used. <laughs> and the best lines to encapsulate what the archers are going through right now comes from the film Coach Carter, which says, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. And that power is the magnitude of the archers' heart. With Ateneo fighting for survival, the archers anticipate a tough battle ahead to help them focus, a mass was held with them yesterday, where in team solidarity and integrity were the underlying themes. On a festive note, Archer co-cap T.Y. Tang celebrates his birthday today. Hey, happy birthday. What a great birthday gift for T.Y. Tang if they can come up with a win today. Thank you very much, Mickey Dallas. In the meantime, Joseph Yo, like a predator today, on attack mode, and Jun Kabatu, great recognition on the cut, giving it up to the ninja, and... Uh, he reunites with the 15-foot line, which hasn't been a sweet relationship so far here in the first quarter. He has missed his third free throw in a row, Ryan. That's right, and uh, it doesn't speak well, at least, on the prowess of uh, Joseph Yo. But this time, on his fourth attempt, he finally nails one. And this is the game plan of uh, Coach Franz. It has been the same game plan since game one. They will press right after they make a basket. It's the same game plan for the last eight years, oh, yes. Ryan. What are you talking about? That's right. <laughs> LA Tenorio now. The man who has to deliver for Coach hey! Norman Black. He has had a miserable time against La Salle here in Season 68. Well, he's been a marked man. Make no mistake about it. Every time LA Tenorio handles that leather, two guys at least will always collapse him. But Ryan Aranya, way back in game two, he sizzled with 18 big points, boom, and now he's starting on the right foot once again. He may not shoot a lot from that area. more heart. Coach Norman Black told me that during their previous games in LaSalle, the Archers shot ahead early on and the Eagles weren't able to catch up. So today the team must meet the Archers physically from the start. At last night's send-off match for the boys, as well as for the Eaglets and Lady Eagles, who are all in the Final Four, co-captains L.A. Tenorio and Magnum Embraer promised the Ateneo community one heck of a showdown. Boom. Congratulations to uh, Leah the rest of the Ateneo community for the wins, but of course, you want it to be complete with this one. Now, what was going on, Ryan? While Leo was reporting, there was commotion on that Ateneo bench. Well, I uh, heard the tail end of the Parker. It was a warning, I think, on uh, one of the players for taunting from the Ateneo bench. All right, that was a smart buddy three, smart buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. L.A. Tenorio, T.Y. Tang, the double team on L.A. He forces the action, wanted to draw the foul. He takes it away from Aquino. Kramer, off to L.A. L.A. And he L.A. Tenorio, Tenorio starting like a house on fire. Four big points already. It's a great way to start the ball game if your best player starts scoring. And he averages two steals a game. He takes one from J.R. Aquino. And six to four is our count. LaSalle still ahead. And a turnover for De La Salle and those, there is so much emotion already in the opening minutes of this game. First, let's check out this Polo shot block brought to you by Polo. Life's a whole lot cooler with Polo. It's not gonna be easy for either team today. Mackey goes up, but not in, and Kabatu, the best rebounder for La Salle, averaging 7.2. 
gets his first one today. Abato against Intal. Araña from 15. That's short. And Tenorio tracks down that loose ball. Seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. And I'm already sweating like hell. <laughs> Tenorio thought about it. They go to JC. Another outside jumper. This one's short. JC is zero out of three from the field so far. Aranya cops out, does the wise thing, but then he reverses, cuts the angle. Yo picks up the loose ball. The referees are letting the players play today, Ryan. Oh yes, uh, a lot of contact, but uh, the referees refusing to whistle, uh, yes. blow that whistle. And to the dismay of that green crowd that you saw, akalayatan lang pito. Well, when you're a player, you, you can't anticipate the whistle. You have to go strong, whatever the case. And if a foul is called, then a foul is called. But can't anticipate that there will That's be a whistle. Right, but the problem is, usually, boom, in an environment like yes. this, you always tell your players, don't stop until you hear the whistle. But how can you hear the whistle, boom? <laughs> Are you complaining? <laughs> Ball with Lasal. Kabatu pulls up. Awkward looking shot. And Aquino and Kramer bustling for the rebound. And the foul is called on Doug Kramer. Kramer's first personal fouls. Two turnovers for De La Salle so far. None for Ateneo. And two turnover points. For Ateneo, and we, we we say this because this is a stat that I'm sure Ryan you want to keep track of. Well, definitely, it was obvious in the first two games. If uh, we were to summarize those two wins by Lasal, it was the turnovers committed by Ateneo and the forced uh, turnover points scored by uh, Lasal. So at least now Ateneo is doing the right thing. They're forcing turnovers from Lasal. Count three because of this uh, third turnover by Lasal. So. Pretty much your game plan pointing to the side of Coach Norman Black. Well, we talked about this during the pregame, Ryan. Regardless of all the disadvantages and the, st the odds stacked up against Ateneo, they have really got to dig down deep today and believe that they can win at least one. Oh, definitely. It has to be a mental game at this point, and the psychological advantage, of course, is on the side of LaSalle. But boom, you have to look at it on the proper perspective. Ateneo can approach this game thinking that this is a best of three and they just lost game one. Uh -huh. So whatever happens, they need two. So that's what they thinking mo, they will be... Blue versus green. Dr. Ralph Recto joining us here at the Araneta Coliseum. The Trillios in attendance. Wearing green, obviously. Enrico Villanueva also cheering on some of his former teammates. And... Um, Felicitas Francisco of the UAAP board also here by our side in attendance for Final Four action between Ateneo and La Salle. We're glad to have you with us live on Studio 23. Campato hesitated and is unable to get it to stay down. So we are 6-4, at four. Ryan. Been a while. As you look at the rebounds, La Salle lording it over so far. L.A. as Chapet comes into the ballgame. L.A. against Joseph Yo, Trying to outmaneuver him. A tap from June Cabato. The ball stays with Blue with five, five seconds, seconds to shoot. But it's a good sign that L.A. is very aggressive today. Oh, yes. Uh, we have not seen that, especially in game two. But uh, today, it's really going after that ball. is taking those shots. But sometimes, yung uh, in advice shots, well, shot clock was down to four. I guess he decided as he takes away the ball from Joseph Yo the second time around here in the game. Tenorio pulls up. That short takes it back. But J.R. Aquino takes it away. And Aaron Araña says enough is enough. Ahead of the back is June Cabato. Cabato skies. Wow. Oh, Great body oh. control and upper body strength for Jun Jun Cabato. What a he finish. has to elude those defensive arms. And the score of those uh, fast break attempts. Maki Escalona, nowhere to go. LA has attempted, hasn't really found the mark yet today. He's trying to set up his teammates as he is pushed away by Ryan Aranya. Let's check out first a steal by LA Tenorio, brought to you by Samsung. With Samsung, it's not hard to imagine. 
Magnum and Breres seeing action for the first time and egging the Ateneo crowd to really go and uh, celebrate because this is a chance for them to redeem some lost glory boom. and this is their only chance of doing so in today's game. Well, if you compare the first two games, and you look back on the first two games, uh, Ryan, it's imperative for, for Ateneo not to get LaSalle into that hot start that they usually get into. The first and the second game, same story. They got buried at the start. Maybe the second game was a little bit closer, but then eventually LaSalle was able to pull away. But they also have to look at a different uh, direction at this point. Mainly, when they were going up against LaSalle in the first two games, they might have thought, or they were really working on their uh, offense. But the thing is, if you stop the offensive options of LaSalle and not allow them to score as many baskets, they will not be able oh. to do their fast break or their full court pressing defense. So yun ang ginagawa ngayon Ateneo. For focusing on defense, not allowing LaSalle to score easy baskets. How about Japet Aguilar forcing a turnover on T.Y. Tang? That's how long those arms are. And did you see him die for that loose ball ball? Yes. Tim is not 6'7". So far, as we look at JV Castro and our Attic Mobile substitution board, Attic Mobile prepaid, now you're in. Turnovers creeping up on LaSalle. Tenorio drives, sets up Kim Son. He will not take it from there. 16 on the shot clock. Kim Son underneath, unable to get it to stay down. It is so tough to get inside. Aquino, Chapet all over him and is called for a foul. And if you're J.R. Aquino or any other LaSalle player, chances of you getting blocked are high. So you've got to go hard. That's uh, correct. And uh, you just have to admire the uh, toughness of uh, J.R. Aquino. Body strong. Body Tinawaga. That's, uh, we all caught that on our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. The first personal on Japet. Aguilar. I'm sure Lasal knows it. Uh, for as long as they go strong against Japet Aguilar, it's almost second nature for Japet to try to block or change the shot. Change yeah. the shot. So if you just go aggressive and get him into foul trouble, it will be easier for Lasal to attack the basket later if he languishes on the bench. Of course, we're talking about Japet Aguilar. And they really want to run talking about Lasal because they don't want that oh, yes. Ateneo defense to set up. And uh, when Japet is in there, Ascasio takes it away but runs out of space. When Japet is in there, he usually just is the best help side defense here in the UAE. That's right. Attic Mobile substitution. Mark Benitez now coming in. Attic Mobile prepaid now. You're in. 3.30 to play in the first quarter. And Ateneo, so far, only with four points to show. By LaSalle, nine. Not a pretty first quarter for both teams especially for JC and Tal who has missed all of his four shots Aranya Nagmamadali Japet picking it up and they cop out and reset the table Aranya almost another steal completed by JC Tenorio against JV they go to the other side and a nice fake by Daniel they are forcing the turnovers. Senator Mar Rojas and Marina Sanchez here. Big goal. Senator Jingo Estrada also with us. All in attendance. Rich Alvarez all understanding the importance of this game. Whether you're from La Salle or you're from Ateneo. For Ateneo, you win this one, you survive, and get in one more. If you're La Salle, you go to the finals and try to defend the crown that you've had for one full year. Tenorio has no turnovers in the game, Ryan, so far. He's trying uh, to control that leather. He knows the importance of it. And he's trying to make his teammates get involved on the offense. Aranya with his third rebound of the game as Pembrere misfires from downtown. Coming up on the two-minute mark of this very long first quarter. Later and Aranya getting it on and the aggression foul called 
on Ryan Aranya. Of course, there's no love lost between Ryan Aranya and the rest of the Ateneo squad. No kidding. In game two, boom, when uh, the outcome was pretty much settled, Aranya did a little jiggy. So it's definitely still in the minds of every Atenean here in uh, the Araneta Coliseum and also the people watching on their television sets. So talagang kasama yan, itong si Ryan at Aranya will be a bright man as well. As always, as always, whether he does the jiggy or not, <laughs> really, seriously. <laughs> Nine to six, Ateneo still behind by three. And L.A. holding on, clutching on to that spheroid for a very long time. Now makes his move, sets up Intal, Intal wasn't ready. D.Y. Tang will pull up from 15, nothing there. Meyer Hopper is in the game for the first time. Aguilar goes high, Whoa! and in! What a system displayed there by Japheth Aguilar. Woo! I thought he was going to dunk it from there. I thought he was going to do a Vince Carter move. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an impact play right there that cuts the lead down to one. Casho, the Ateneo killer, is in the ball game for the first time. Lander fighting hard, but Cholo Villanueva in the ball game, getting his first retrieval at the one minute mark of this first quarter action all of a sudden picking up they go inside to benitez benitez shakes picks and gets it up and in nice move by benitez great footwork there to score his first two points here in the ball game silences the crowd for a while 11 to 8 is the score both teams jabbing and jabbing endlessly here in the first quarter then audio fakes, sets up Mater from 18, swish! That's an important basket for Ateneo. Every time Tenorio tries to drive, he will always attract the defense. So if he makes those kick-out passes, you have to make sure that you're going to knock it in. JV from 15, thought about it. He has missed the two shots that he has taken. Membrere has Aguilar ahead of him. Aguilar has Casio. Membrere ends up with the ball, and there's a foul ball. On JV Kasha. Kasha did the right thing. He knew Jaffet was going to put the ball down on the floor, so he went for the steal. But first, let's look at this shot by Aguilar. Look at the leverage of this guy, and then the finish. He may have lost the ball, but it's still a power move powered by new Ravicon Ion Energy Drink. Put this on Ion. Wow. That takeoff is scary. If you, if you master that takeoff in vertical leap, then. Yung tinatawag na kay Jordan dati na kiss na rin. Oo. Ganda nun. Seven seconds remaining in this first quarter. 11 to 10 is the score. Short on the three is Magnum. A second remaining in this first quarter and LaSalle has not pulled away. And if you're Coach Norman Black, you like that. This is where they want to be. This is by far, even if they're down one point, by far the best. Sareno in the ball game for coach Norman Black for a little hustle he's going up against just Joseph Yo who attempts the three off the back iron and LA in LA Tenorio rather getting his second rebound of the game I'm checking on the stats right now boom especially in the first quarter I, 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 I thought Atneo did a good job controlling again the turnovers that they that they committed they only turned the ball over two times and they have not allowed De La Salle University to score off the turnovers that's why now they're only down by one point plus we're concerned though only one player holding that ball in that last sequence only L.A. Tenorias Joseph Yo goes wild but Rico Meyer Hopper like a bunny hopping for the rebound and the offensive putback that's really dangerous for guys coming off uh, the uh, weak side to get those rebounds almost a turnover again Eman struggling to get a hold of that spheroid. He panicked and he fouls Cholo Villanueva. And that's a problem sometimes when you use a player who's not, and not, this is not a knock on him, but you, when you don't get that feel of the floor throughout the season and you're exposed to a situation like that, iba yung mental makeup mo sometimes. There's panic factor, especially yung ganitong everything is at stake. 
Attic Mobile substitution. Attic Mobile prepaid. Now you're in. Back in Escalona. Back in the ball game. Funny is his most challenging matchup is LA Tenorio. Sa practice yan. Oh, oh, practice sila. Oh, oh. Eh. Parang Jordan Scotty Pippen. Eh. Sa practice. But gagaling siya kung ganyan. Kasi good competition. Mm -hmm. 13 to 10. Second quarter. Welcome to the show. The big show is the final four. La Sala Teneo in the first game. FEUUE in the second matchup. All happening over Studio 23. At the big dome. Boo Gonzalez. Coach Ryan Gregorio. Glad to have you with us. This has become a uh, defensive game for uh, Ateneo. As what I've been saying earlier, it's very important for them to establish their defense. But now, they're throwing the ball oh, over. Oh, what a fake! What oh, a sensational move oh, by Cholo Villanueva on the show and goal. This has to be a very scary quarter for Ateneo. Imagine, and do you remember, Boom, in game one, they allowed Casal to score 30, and they've only scored seven. Yeah. Also in this same quarter, the second quarter. Let's go to Mickey Dennis with the Samsung courtside update. Mickey. Interesting fact, for the first time in eight years, eight, uh, our term manager, rather, Terry Capistrano, led the prayer just before the game, which just shows us how important this game is for them today. We are in a position to go all the way, Coach Rance told us, boys, and take care of this chance. The archers are told to have complete trust in each other on the court, to regroup when necessary, and to use their heads. Stop dribbling and look for the pass, they were told. No one told you this would be easy, but you've come prepared and we have done our homework, they reminded. Let's go out there and enjoy our game. Boom. Smart Buddy Slomo showing the show and go move by Cholo Villanueva. The instant replay by Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. Coming up, or actually we are at the 8.02 mark of this second quarter. Highly competitive ball game between Ateneo and Lasal. Ateneo with two turnovers here in the second quarter all of a sudden after having two in the hole of the first. Looking at the shot of the bench of the Blue Eagles. Try to go inside. And Leterre could not handle the pressure. All Referees right. Garferio, Marabi, and Soriano with us today. Yes, right. In the first quarter, Coach Norman Black had a L.A. Tenorio and a J.C. Tal. So pretty much the offensive people or the players who will be the primary options in the offense are pretty much predictable. Pero ngayon, parang nags a struggle itong lima ni Coach Norman on who and where to pass the ball, especially when the shot clock is winding down. That's why J.C. is coming in right now. And that's why Emma Nazareno was in that in this is in this ball game really. It's for defensive. Oh, and yes. he forced that error right there on two players. Ten seconds shot clock to work with if you're De La Salle University. I'm sure Coach Norman and his staff scouted it was JV Casho. That's why yeah. it's being guarded by uh, Nazareno. Casho has averaged close to 14 in the first two games. Excellent point there, Ryan. And then again, a turnover forced by the hustle of Eman Nazareno. You get anything from the offensive side from that guy, it's a bonus. But right now, what he's trying to do is provide that bleach-like defense on JV. Another risky pass, but is able to hurdle. Japet stops. Mackey goes back to Japet. Japet, again, this time, they will call it. Earlier, he almost. But I think Rico Meyerhofer put a little acting into it. He tried again, but this time he was really bummed. That's right. Chapet is not yet used, yet not yet used to it, rather. Meaning, yung yes. yung primary option on offense. Kaya, if you put him on the weak side, Here. getting offensive rebounds or finishing up fast breaks, okay. Pero yung ganyan, medyo naninibago pa siya. Very clear on our smart buddy instant replay. Smart buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. The, the picks being set now for JV. Cholo Villanueva puts it on the floor, pulls up, yes! Oh, oh, Off the bench, yeah. Cholo Villanueva providing the spark with four points and the lead up to seven as Ateneo again has hit a rut. They have not scored yet here in this quarter. And Nazare they've been forcing Ateneo to struggle offensively. Look at this, 10 seconds of the shot clock, they're still undecided on what to do. Mackey has the ball taken away by Joseph Yo. And that's why LA is getting ready to come back into the ballgame. Joseph throws it up. Nothing there. Meyerhofer could not handle it. 
possession will remain with Lasalle as we send it over to Leah Cruz for this Samson courtside update. One of the problems that Coach Donald Lack cited in the huddle was that they can't seem to get a solid screen on the foul. He reminded the players to, to set their man up well. He also mentioned that they cannot let their defense down. That's how they're going to win this game. Yet they've got to get their offense going by taking good shots. All the boys are definitely feeling the intensity here, especially graduating players. L.A. Tenorio, Magnum Embrera, and Baji Del Rosario, who could very well be playing their last game. Thank you very much, Leah Cruz. Well, those are the players that are graduating, but I want to go back to the point that she made, that she observed from Coach Norman Black, no solid pick set up for the guards. That's right, and the, the tremendous, and compounded, of course, by the tremendous individual defense by these LaSalle players. JC finally gets his first real goal of the game. And L.A. Tenorio lost the ball. Actually, it was Evan Nazareno who lost it. And Tenorio recovering it. And Tenorio just becomes a different team when L.A. Tenorio is in that ball game. It's all of a sudden they have a legitimate threat who's handling the ball. And right now, that was, those were the first two points by Ateneo, the first two points of uh, J.C. and Tal also in the ballgame. On the third assist of L.A. Tenorio, who's facing Joseph Yo right now on defense, eludes him. Nazareno will not shoot. They have 10 on the shot clock. Intal against Benitez. Wants to take him off the dribble. But he gives it up. Tenorio all day for a three. Short. And the tap going to Benitez. And a foul is called probably on Kimson as he was pushed to the floor. The conditioning factor will be a concern right now for L.A. Tenorio and the rest of the Ateneo squad. L.A. is just holding the ball for so long. Speaking of conditioning, look at this up and under move. The power move powered by new Revicon Ion Energy Drink. So <laughs> it should be easier than usual. There you go, Alfonso Villarreal. That's from our team, Pure Foods TJ Hot Dog. Lucky fans enjoying the UAP Games Live and enjoying the Pure Foods TJ Hot Dogs. Kids can tell. And regardless of whether his team is behind by seven, I got my hot dog. <laughs> I don't care about anything else. Don't get making a kain. Lasal with possession. Joseph Yo tries another one, rims out. And Nazareno is fouled by Cholo Villanueva. All right, for many people who might be uh, thinking, why is Nazareno inside? He's doing all the other things, meaning he's screening off, he's getting the defensive rebounds, and more importantly, he's defending pretty well that the point guards of Lasalle seem to have a hard time to score, specifically JB Casho, who's out right now without scoring a basket. Although he's coming back in in a bit, Martin Kimson looking for somebody to bail him out. Tenorio shoots the three! And he waited for Joseph Yo to come to him. He gets the foul and he will take three free throws. Point of concern, Ryan, for Ateneo. They only had two turno turno turnovers rather in the first quarter. Here in the second, they already have five and we have five minutes to play still. It's a huge turnaround from the first quarter to the second quarter. It all happened when L.A. Tenorio and J.C. Tal simultaneously hit the bench. So the guys who came off the bench were not ready for the press. So that was exactly the time that Nasal pounced on the, uh, on the inefficiency of the Ateneo team to uh, break the press. So now that the LA is back, JC is back, bumalik na ulit yung semblance ng uh, team offense or the system that Coach Norman Black wants to install in this team. Tenorio had four points in the first quarter. He has two more gift shots from the 15th parallel line. This might be dangerous. He might be able to get that stroke from that area. He has three assists, three steals, four rebounds, two out of six from the uh, two-point area, nothing from downtown, three attempts so far. And good three out of three for L.A. Tenorio. I'm also looking at those numbers. You know, this might be the last time we see L.A. on the UAP floor, so it'd be nice to watch out for those numbers. It is hard to believe, Boom. I'm checking on the stats. Game one and game two. It is just this ball game that L.A. Tenorio has not scored from beyond the three-point line. He's zero out of nine so far in the first two games against, included. Against, against LaSalle. LaSalle. He really has it hard and tough against LaSalle, doesn't he? They swing it to L.A. Strokes the three. Whoa. As we said, he got the touch from the three-point line and he gets it to go from downtown.
is just taking so many shots and uh, it's falling in right now. So because of uh, the number of shots, he will definitely get his stroke back. Ten points now for LA. He is looking ahead, looking for JC, looking for something to happen on the offensive side. Finds Nazareno. Nazareno creates space for himself. Nothing there. Kabatu with his sixth rebound of the game. Joseph Yo has been quiet here in the second. Not wow. anymore. Okay. And he looks at oh. France and says, Wag mo muna ako palitan. So they recall si Barua. Tama-tama <laughs> yun. Ang kaling mo. Eh, maganda nga naman. That might also be the uh, spark that he's been waiting for. A left-handed shot. Intal has been a non-factor here in the game. Magnum throws it up, rims out, and Kabatu taps it to the Ninja. The Ninja looking to accelerate. They go to JV. Nazarena is on him, serving him a facial. But G. Del Rosario also getting ready to come in. Kabatu, pull-up jumper, out. And LA with the easy repossession. And then the three-minute mark of this second quarter, he settles down the troops. Looks for the roadblock. Tenorio for the three. Gets oh, it to go! This is an L.A. Tenorio show. And we're all witnessing how this man can really turn things around for his team. You do remember the 25-point oh, outburst yes. that he had against FBU. 23 in the second half. Joseph Yo. This is everything. Meyer Hopper has it deflected. Gets it back. Puts it up and gets the foul. Action picking up here in the second quarter as L.A. Tenorio scoring four points in the first quarter. And nine points in the second. Punctuated by a smart money three. The number one prepaid service in the country. Shooting 27% from beyond the arc. He caps off an 11-2 run here in the second. Back in a moment. Quarter, nine points. 11-2 run. Meyer Hopper unable to kick in that free throw. And we said that, you know, the last two games against Lasalle, he has struggled. It might be his final game. You put it all out on the table, Ryan. That's right. Just look at the numbers versus Lasalle and against the others here in this league but definitely it's not the same situation right now for LA Tenorio he has scored six points both from the three-point area so it's no longer gonna be zero out of ten it's now at least two out of 17 for LA Tenorio from beyond the three and he tied the ball game for the first time earlier at 21 all now it's 22 to 21 that's a poor pass by Bajita Del Rosario who just came in fresh here in the ball game mainly for defensive purposes once again coach norman black just uh, expects jv casho to really set some tone on the offensive system of la salle yeah, by mere scoring so now he is a hounded man and what a fake by jv he lets it fly but but g recovering just in time what a ploy by coach norman oh, yes. black huh la again yeah. able to get it up and in in the face of rico meyer hopper when he wants to play, there are a few people who can stop him. <laughs> Kabatu fading away, short. And Kim Son with a rebound. Ateneo with the lead, its first lead of the ball game, 23-22. Tenorio is one out of five from the field. Joseph Yo hounding L.A. Tenorio. L.A. gets the double, does not panic, they recover. J.C. drives, sends it over to Magnum, who loses the ball to the baseline. Because of the brilliance of L.A. Tenorio, especially here in the second quarter, now LaSalle is trying to double him and forcing him to make the extra pass. It's really up for the other four guys who's playing alongside Tenorio right now to live up to the expectations and score just to make sure that the LaSalle's defense will pay big time because of the kind of defense that they're doing against LA. Well, we're down to 50 seconds here in the second quarter. And today with the lead. Casio free for a three. Nothing there, but he will keep on trying 
and they will keep on executing. You can bet your money on that. And they've uh, been setting up JV Casho to launch that shot from off screens or even spot up jumpers, but because of the defense, he has not yet rang the bell. Reminiscent of, uh, of Red Red Ritualo. JC is hacked. And a brilliant crossover move by the Rocket. Finally, somebody other than oh, L.A. Yes. driving to the basket and Gary Leasing enjoying the action as <laughs> always. Haven't seen him a lot here in season 68 compared to the previous years. But now, yes, he is here in attendance. It is a big game, probably the final game for Ateneo. They did have a seven game winning streak in season 68, but that will all go for naught. They don't at least extend this series. And I'm sure you wouldn't mind if they did. Oh, yes. Although the LaSalle fans would. They don't want to be in that situation of having to beat Ateneo again. You know, the only thing I feel that's working for Ateneo going into this game, Ryan, is the law of averages. That's right. Diba, that's no? right. Can that's you beat Ateneo three times in a row? Yes, you can. But in this season, that's a question that we are about to answer. And not if LA Tenorio can do something about it as well. Obviously, he's trying to stop that 3-0 to zero run, at least of uh, La Salle here in this season. Jay V is pounced on and loses the ball. They have a second. LA puts it up. No. <laughs> that would have been an incredible fiery finish to this first half. And second quarter was owned by LA Tenorio. Ateneo starting off really slow, committing five quick turnovers, but LA willing his team back, scoring. 11 points in the second quarter and the lead is with the Blue Eagles 25 22 we'll be back with everything that is the halftime show final four action here at the big dome yes third quarter is underway with a score now at 25 to 24 after J.R. Aquino was able to get it up and in Inta looking to be more aggressive here in the second half, but just could not find the hole. But you've got to keep on trying if you're JC. Oh, definitely, especially now that uh, the adjustment on the part of Coach Franz Omarin has put the cuffs on the LA Tenorio. JC should be available. He should step forward and say, I'm willing to take the challenge and score and lead this team to the next uh, level, which is the finals. Now the lead is back to La Salle and Aranya again bumped. Bothering JC and it's getting into his head. 26-25. It's always imperative for either team or any team for that matter. As you look at that wonderful floater by Joseph Yo to start the quarter strong. Oh yes, in the third quarter, Laxal has scored already four points, so erased the three-point deficit they had at the end of two quarters. And now Joseph Yo seeing a wide open lead towards the basket. Seeing red is more like it, or seeing blue. As he kicks the lead up to three again, 28-25. Yo with four points here in the third. If you look at this game, Ryan, actually, the quarters, the start, have been really La Salle quarters. The first, the second, and the third. Kaya lang may konting finishing kick itong Ateneo so far. Totoo yun. Yo attempts the three. Kramer has also been a non-factor. This is a problem for Norman Black. He has only one rebound and no points so far for Doug Kramer, who is averaging 9.3 points and close to nine rebounds a game. A close double-double for Doug Kramer, but now he is non-existent so far. But it has been the ploy of Coach Norman Black, as seen in the first two quarters, to let L.A. Tenorio run the show. If L.A. decides to shoot, then he will shoot. So the options of uh, Doug Kramer are pretty much limited. He will just get defensive rebounds or hustle boards. Those are the only things he can score in today's game. Well, I have to add also that Doug Kramer committed two personal fouls early in the game. So that might be a factor. In the meantime, a delivery to Martin Gamson, one of the candidates for assist of the game, delivered by KFC. Escalona comes into the ball game now. I think he replaces Magnum Mimbrere right away. Rico Meyerhofer for Ryan Aranya. Aranya with three personal fouls. A little bit of a uh, wrinkle on the shirt of Coach Franz Kumaren. Larry Furacher, the former King Eagle in the 
foreground. The background is Rich Alvarez, his former partner. Not only here, but the, the PBL, nagkasama rin sila. And now this is a good sign for Intal. He knocks down both. Might get his form from the free throw line. Intal takes it away from Tang, but Aquino picks it up. Firehopper flies! J.R. Aquino takes it from everybody. And Kramer says enough is enough, but he swings an elbow. Aiden, of course, by a little acting job on the part of Rico Mayer Hopper, but this is going to be costly, especially on the rotation of Coach Norman Black, the big man's rotation specifically. Doug Kramer got a good defensive rebound. He swung that uh, shoulder of his. Might have gotten away with a little acting job with the Rico Mayer Hopper, but the call was all part of it. Remain. Yeah. Caught on our Smart Money Instant Replay. Smart Money, the number one replay service in the country. So that's why Doug cannot get this game going. Ryan, that is his third foul. Mackey does not protect the ball, and Yo with the semi dunk gets the lead up again. It's 30 to 29. Mackey hounded by Joseph, and a foul called on the ninja. He was willing to give it up. But still, I like the energy that Lasalle is displaying here at the start of the third quarter. This is definitely their game. Forcing turnovers and finishing it off with a bang. Again, caught on our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. JC. The change of direction. Kabatu on Intal. Goes to Kramer. Kramer against Triple Team. Still no goal for Doug. Let's go to Mickey Dellis for a Samson courtside update. Mickey. Actually, you shall have time for Archer Hernandez has team without the coaches. Joseph Yo, Archer captain, took this opportunity to showcase his leadership by giving his teammates words of encouragement for this half. They may have been frustrated with the outcome of the first half, but they also have a great sense of determination. This quarter is a very important quarter for the Archers. The team spoke of their inner power, which is that no matter what, they, no matter what rather, they will tirelessly find ways to take it all. Boom. Thank you very much, Mickey. Rico Meyer Hopper able to slam it home in this fast break brought to you by Milo. Drink Milo every day. Meyer Hopper throws it down and gives them a three point lead of 32 29. You know, Ateneo has done a good job getting in. They just could not put in the shot as we look at Javid Aguilar. Check back in on our Attic Mobile substitution board. Attic Mobile prepaid. Now you're in. I'm tired, Ryan. I'm well, tired. That's right. I'm looking at at least the first few attempts of Ateneo. L.A. Tenorio was not getting the needed attempts or the number of attempts that he took in the first two quarters. Now the other guys are taking advantage, especially Lasalle. They're taking advantage of the missed shots by the other Ateneo players. Yes. The problem is really for Ateneo is that they're allowing Lasalle to score off the fast breaks. And this is exactly where Lasalle gets their momentum. Tang. Pulls out. Tang also a non-factor on offense, at least for LaSalle. Mabatu pulls up. Mabatu has not found the stroke. Ateneo with three turnovers already here. The four turnover points by LaSalle. Tenorio against Joseph Yo. Tenorio shoots the three. Off the back iron and Meyer Hopper comes away with a repossession. His sixth of the ball game. Yo, getting into traffic. Intal takes it away, loses it though, and is fouled by Rico Meyerhofer. At least Ateneo is getting the missed shots, even though there's some turnovers back, but still they're looking. Araneta Coliseum for more of the third quarter between Ateneo and LaSalle. They have not taken care of that leather so far here in the third. Slow start for the Blue Eagles, they're behind by three. They go back to their main man, Mackey, spinning and traveling. Mackey has not been a factor here. He's uh, having trouble just bringing the ball down from the backcourt to their front court. And uh, on the other hand, it's the Mansi Joseph Yo. Look at the points, G scores every time they win, and the numbers every time they lose. So the barometer for this LaSalle team is Joseph Yo, and today he has 11 points to show across his name. Well, he is the captain of the De La Salle University.
As we check out who else? Japit Aguilar with a little bit of help of JC and Tal and a Polo shot block brought to you by Polo. Life's a whole lot cooler with Polo. Five minute mark of this third quarter. JC back to LA. LA setting up Intal. Intal with a couple of fakes. No foul. Japet puts it up and in. Just in time. First two points here in the third quarter for Japet Aguilar. And again, Lasa Ateneo is back to what they've done in the first two quarters. Allow Eller Tenorio to do something on their offense. Joseph Yo again knowing what he should do when it goes up against Japet Aguilar. Go hard, go strong. Don't worry about getting blocked. And a guy who is as shifty as Joseph Yo, the perfect match. He can go right, he can go left, he can finish right or oh, left. Yes. Mr. Daniel Jose, of course, of De La Salle University. Dr. Ricardo Matibag of the UAP board. Mr. Ricky Palu also with us, technical committee. All joining us here at, at the Araneta Coliseum. Mr. Ramoncito, Mr. Ramoncito Campos also of El Asal. Kiko Diaz, of course, from the University of the Philippines. Bagurun kay uh, Mr. Campos. All with us here. At the Blue Eagle Gym, 440 and a two-point lead for De La Salle. Bajita Rosario back in the ball game. Tenorio. A hop, skip and a jump, but that's short. It was deflected by J.R. Aquino. Joseph Yo, the man for De La Salle here in the third. Oh, he forced that one, but he gets it up oh. and in again. Joseph what a very smart Yo. play. He knew he could not elude those arms of Japet Aguilar, so what he did was just to throw it off the board. He exactly knew where it was going to bounce down, so he just took that second chance opportunity. Problems, problems, problems. Hounding at in air right now. Press break. The ultimate question is, can they break it? And LaSalle has been uh, doing wonders defensively here in the third quarter. Five turnovers here in the third quarter for Ateneo. Two only for LaSalle. But G. Del Rosario committed that last one as he just checked in. You know who has come in for Ateneo? Ken Baramoso. Baramoso, that's right. But this is bad news. T.Y. Tang knocking it in from the outside. And again, the biggest lead, at least here in the third quarter for LaSalle, a six-point lead for them. They enjoyed the, a lead earlier in the second. Nine points was the biggest lead of the white shirt. Another turnover for Ateneo. Joseph puts it up. Oh! Hover for the Slamma Gemma. And LaSalle is rocking right now. 39-31. Another turnover, and Yo has been the man. Keystack, eight turnovers in the third quarter for Ateneo. 14 turnover points for LaSalle to zero of Ateneo. That is what is killing them right now as field goals are also not a bright spot for the Blue Eagles. They are two out of nine after that shot. Well, LaSalle just took a lot more attempts here in the third quarter because of the number of turnovers that Ateneo has committed. But when things start to flow, even the guys who are not used to scoring will deliver, as shown by uh, J.R. Aquino there. Adrenaline are the which is something that Ateneo desperately needs. Right, Leah? Let's go to her for our Samsung courtside update. Leah Cruz. Blue Eagles have gotten off to an organized start, an unorganized start rather, here in the third quarter. Coach on the Black wants to stay organized and to set the play up when things aren't going well. I don't want to see us lose control of the game. During halftime, he talked about coming up with even more energy, helping out on the boards and attacking LaSalle's press. The Eagles are definitely not happy with LaSalle's recent run and we're pumping each other up in the last huddle. Boom. Thank you very much, Well, You gotta do what you've got to do. In this game, as Tenorio now is trying to get this team back, and he draws the foul, he scored earlier. Yo has 18 points and four rebounds. Tenorio with 17 and six. That has been the matchup between the Ninja 
And downtown LA, Joseph Yo and our smart buddy, instant replay, smart buddy, the number one prepaid. Coach France, of course, looking for his seventh final appearance, his sixth overall, and if he wins today, that is 110 wins in the UAAP. Wow. That's all you can say, really. <laughs> but I, I was talking about, uh, during the halftime break, the fatigue factor. And L.A. Pinorio just mopped two kick shots. 15 points in the first two quarters and only two here. And what I expect really from the other guys, specifically guys like J.C. and Tal and the Tungsi Dog Gramer, is to help out in the scoring department. It was a different game plan in the first two quarters for Coach Norman. He can get away with putting two or three defensive players because L.A. Tenorio was just unstoppable offensively. But now I think he has to mix it up. He has to put in good offensive players combined with defensive uh, prowess who can stop the onslaught of Joseph Yo. That's a foul, and, you know, Membrere just put it in. And he's trying to pop up the Ateneo side. L.A. also talking to him. That's a three-point play opportunity for Magnum Membrere. Now, the thing here is you don't want to be buried by LaSalle because they're very good in terms of protecting leads. As Casio fouls him, and a smart buddy instant replay shown to you. Smart buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. LaSalle doesn't really relinquish a lot of leads, especially against Ateneo. And Tembrera completes the three-point play opportunity. If Ateneo loses, they go home. It's as simple as that. And LaSalle goes to the finals. Bang! Eluding everybody, slipping and sliding in traffic and puts it up and in. Just too many points inside the paint for LaSalle. Now you begin to wonder, where are the help side defenders? Everybody are just concerned stopping the, their, their own man. But what if he gets beaten? Now you miss the presence of Jabot Aguilar inside. Four points for Tang. Four points for Meyerhofer, four for J.R. Aquino, all here in the third. And of course, the main man is Joseph Yo, who is fouled there by Zion Latere. Well, the open court has been the domain of LaSalle this season. And once you give them opportunities to score inside the paint and pounce on the absence of Japet Aguilar, they will be unstoppable. Just take a look at look this. T.Y. Tang. Look at him maneuvering through traffic. Presence. But the problem really is that Ateneo is playing LaSalle's game. They're also trying to push the ball, trying to speed up. But you don't want that if you're going up against LaSalle. You just do not want to uh, go with the flow. And uh, the intensity and the energy factor really is pointing the direction of LaSalle. It's really up for Ateneo now to control the tempo of the ball game. If they do that, they might uh, break the momentum of LaSalle. This is the first time that Ateneo doesn't finish strong in the, uh, the quarter so far in this game. You know, LaSalle, when you talk about the personality and the, the story of this team, the whole season right. 68, even going back to oh, last yes. year, they've always been about pacing and just shifting gears at the right moment. They do it in a season. They also do it within the game. Oh, and yes. they're doing it right now. That's right. And here, I go, here they go again, trying to get the ball from Ateneo. The passing lanes are always covered, so the denial defense of this LaSalle players is just working magnificently for them. So the read, really, on, as far as the offensive player is concerned for Ateneo, if the defensive player tries to deny you, go back door. It is a mental lapse for Doug Kramer. Yes, that's, that's obviously... Unforgivable boom at this point. Focus is just not there. This game is eating up in the heads of the Ateneo players. Look at that, that's very Oh, clear. yes. Smart Buddy instant replay again. Smart Buddy, the number one replay service in the country. Bag will put up the three. Ball is loose. It's away and Benitez with the recovery. 35 seconds remaining as you look at the domination of La Salle inside. And D.Y. Bag has found the stroke here in the third and La Salle is threatening to break this game wide open. This is where LaSalle is at its most dangerous. If they score inside the paint, they will get their confidence from the perimeter as well. They will be unstoppable. A confusion on the defensive end, but they were able to recover. Six on the shot clock, seven on the game clock. Where are they going? Mabredes throws up the three, that's short, and that pretty much 
sums up the effort of Ateneo here in the third quarter. It has been short. While four quarter to go for Ateneo and LaSalle, will it be the last 10 minutes of Ateneo for season 68? Third quarter, they'd rather forget it. They were outscored 28 to 11. And 11 points for Ateneo in that third quarter. They were outscored by Joseph Yo on his own 14 third quarter points for Joseph Yo and the turnovers continue to pile up for the guys in blue. The players are struggling. These are the players who might not have enough exposure during the regular season or playing a lot of minutes today. All right, that's our Jack and Jill fantastic moment. Life is fun. Well, they've got to believe that they can come back. It's a 14-point deficit. Biggest lead for LaSalle in the game. And turnovers as we, uh, we... We hate to sound like a broken record, but again, it's our job to do so, uh, <laughs> Ryan. And that is the, the number one stat that really killed Adeneo in the third. And, you know, they may have been able to control J.B. Castro with the presence of Emma Nazareno and even Bajita Rosario. But they were not able to contain J.R. Aquino, T.Y. Tang, and even Cholo Villanueva. Now. They were not able to break the press boom. That's, that has been the story of these two teams. And LaSalle really taking advantage, especially in the third quarter. Turnover points. The story in the first two quarters, LaSalle scoring only four. The result, 25-22 at the end of two, 25-22 at the end of two quarters, advantage Ateneo. But in the third quarter, Ateneo threw the ball over nine times and they've allowed 16 turnover points. The result, 28-11. Advantage LaSalle. So that is the story again. Turnovers plus turnover points. And the sidebar in that story was a Joseph Yo quarter. If the second quarter was an LA Tenorio quarter, Joseph Yo coming alive. 14 third quarter points for Joseph Yo who's on the bench right now. 19 all in all. He knows he's going to come back. And there's uh, that finishing kick of LaSalle. FEU and UE waiting in the wings for their final four matchup. FEU with the twice to beat advantage in that set two, which will be all brought to you in Studio 23 in a bit. Meantime, Cholo Villanueva again. And whose ball is it? It's a Tenea ball. Ranya now back in the ball game for the birthday boy, D.Y. Tang, who gets a much deserved, a well deserved applause. Great effort in the third. Speaking of effort, you gotta be worried about JC and Tal. Only six points in 25 minutes, one out of six from the field. Maki Escalona, they have five on the shot clock. They find Kramer underneath and is pushed by Ryan Aranya. Let's check out Mickey Dellis for a Samsung courtside update. Mickey. One thing is for sure, the Archers have to stay aggressive. Tenoria is expected to be very aggressive this quarter, so they're reminded to contest all passing lanes, and especially to contain L.A. when he comes in, and the rest of the Atenea shooters. Emotions are mounting, and all the pre we can feel the pressure, Boopsie. I'm losing my words, but more important than all the strategies are Coach Trans words. I have complete trust in you. No egos, all team, all hearts. That's the name of their game, and the kind of game Coach wants them to play these final minutes. Boom. It is not often that we see Mickey Dellas lose composure. <laughs> Coming up the eight minute mark of the fourth quarter. Well, everybody's allowed those uh, things here in the UAP, especially with a, an incredible ball game like this, a pulsating one. The lead is still 14 for LaSalle. Time becoming an ally of the Green Archers. Under eight minutes to play, they go underneath to Meprere. Fouled and hacked by Meyer Hoffer. Earlier, Ryan Aranya collected his fourth personal foul and that is Meyerhofer's third. Magnum is just letting it all hang out in today's Last ball. year, right? This is his last year, yes. Last after game, this, probably. After this, if they uh, drop this one, talagang this will be a sad, again, sad story for the Ateneo team. But there's still a lot of time left. 7-4-7. They're only down by 13. Definitely, time is still uh, of the essence, of course, but it's not impossible. You know, for Coach Norman Black, it's really for uh, the players who are graduating. Magnum, it's LA Tenorio, of course. 
course, but Coach Pajit Del Rosario, of course, Coach Norman is expecting them to really play their hearts out in the last few minutes of this quarter. The worst case scenario for Ateneo Ryan, if they lose this, is they end up third place in the tournament, which is an improvement from oh, yes. last year. But why does it feel like it's such a huge disappointment? Is it because it's up against LaSalle and they have not been able to win against LaSalle if they lose this game? Is that part of it? I think that's the biggest factor. Okay. They okay. were not able to redeem themselves. Okay. Uh, they've lost by a convincing uh, fashion, of course. Uh, by an average, to be exact, 18 points per ball game in the first two games. This is pretty much their uh, chance to redeem some lost glory. But at the rate things are going, LaSalle is not uh, giving it to Ateneo. Well, they're not done yet. Our things are falling, literally. The way of LaSalle as Benitez able to get that ball to stay down. You know, the last six points of Ateneo have come via the 15th parallel line through Magnum Membrere. Six points from the free throw line. You have to question, not question, but wonder now, how long is L.A. going to stay on the bench, Ryan? Well, in the third quarter, it was pretty much predictable. The offensive set of Ateneo was predicated on the movements of uh, L.A. Tenorio. So, all LaSalle did was double-team L.A. Tenorio, and the other players were not up to the task of scoring. So, right now, at least, to all the five guys, LaSalle cannot predict who's going to score. So, L.A., uh, Magnum Embrera, and J.C. Intali, and even Doug Kramer now has an opportunity to score. And now, Rico Meyerhofer drew the foul from Japet Aguilar, his fourth personal. Meyerhofer just going under Japet to draw that one as L.A. Tenorio now is it the last six minutes and 17 of his stellar UAAP career. A year that he was, there were rumors that he wasn't supposed to play this year. He sported. Norman Black took over. He was very happy that L.A. decided to play one more year. But is it the last six minutes and 17 of the L.A. Tenorio show? Make, Make, time. Time. Make yes, no right. mistake about it, folks. This is really the time for L.A. Tenorio to wear his Superman jersey and bring his team back. They're down by 12 points at this point. With L.A. Tenorio at the helm, again, the word is impossible. Is it impossible? No, it can be done. L.A. Tenorio can do it for his team. You see that picture of that little girl crying? She knows what's at stake. She knows what, what they're about to lose if they lose today. And L.A. Tenorio says, I'm not done yet, Bullman Ryan. Just give me a chance here. Well, the third quarter, I saw him pop and pop a little. But now, he was given four minutes of rest by Coach Norman Brack and is back to his normal form. Yo wants to take it back wow. and he gets it to go! Joseph Yo looking at the Ateneo crowd and Eli Tenorio is limping, Ryan. Cramps, wow. I think, at the Gastum Camp muscle, yeah. You know, L.A. Tenorio has a, a history of cramps. He does have a history of cramps, Ryan. When I saw him go flat out in the first quarter, the first thing that quickly entered my mind was the conditioning factor. And we've been talking about that all game long. Now, it's taking its toll right now. L.A. Tenorio is languishing on the floor. And you were correct. We've seen games in the PPL wherein he suffered from cramps in the fourth quarter. Now... Sad to say, unfortunately for the Ateneo diehards, their number one player is still on the floor. And I see Joseph Yo getting sprayed, his legs, not his hair, but his <laughs> legs are getting sprayed right now, and LA cannot seem to get up from the hard court. First, let's uh, look at our Cannon Power Shot of the Game, brought to you by Cannon, delighting you always. Wow, a picture-perfect move by Japet Aguilar. <laughs> He made that shot, by the way, for those of you who just tuned in. L.A. is picked up now. This a sad development and a sad ending here in the illustrious career of L.A. Tenorio. Well, he pushed himself to the limit, boom, in the first two quarters. He never him. paced himself, yes. But you can't blame him. You can't blame effort, you know. Huling taon, maaring huling laro. And it's up against your arch rivals in the final four. You got to give it your best. And now it might just be a rallying point for the rest of the Blue Eagles as they have cut the lead down 
to 10 once again on back-to-back -back threes. Now Membrere taking one. Yo attacking. Up, up. And a foul called on an Ateneo player. When Joseph Yo goes up like that, something exciting is bound to happen. But big time players show up in big games. Joseph Yo really giving a good name about himself. He has scored 22 points already. How will you stop a Joseph Yo if he starts to make his three-point shot? Nobody can be beat him off the dribble. He's got great first step and he's got a better finish. He can finish with his left and his right hand. Now, his defenders have huge problems. How to stop Joseph Yo at this point now that he is in the zone? Intal called for a second personal. Joseph Yo, 23 points. And there's been uh, carrying it on the scoring cudgels, really, Coach Franz Pumarin just uh, pushing the right button and the right words to say to motivate Joseph Yo to play as huge as this in the most important game this season for them. Game to play, game to play, there's no doubt about it. JC Ital, West Colona, under five minutes remaining. Ital sidestepping, it has not been a good day for JC Ryan. He has struggled from the field. The pressure might just be too heavy for these two players. They're all expected to really rise to the challenge. I'm talking about JC and the LA. LA is down with cramps. JC has struggled all time, all game long in today's match. Wow. now with a three. That's a big one. A huge three from Ryan Aranya, who shoots 20 percent from that to really give a huge boost on this uh, LaSalle rampage, especially in the third. You know, Ryan, if Ateneo loses this ball game, we can go back to the start of the third quarter. Oh, yes. That's where it all happened for LaSalle. Cranking it up when it mattered. But it's no, we still have time. Four minutes, 16. Let's go to, Sam, uh, to Leah Cruz for a Samson Fort Side update. Thank you, Leah. This may very well be my last report for the season, Roman oh. Ryan, oh. so I might as well smile. <laughs> if the Ateneo Blue Eagles have got to go down, they're definitely going to go down fighting. However, truly, we never really know now, do we? I think I echo the guys on the team and the entire Ateneo community here when I say that we still believe. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you, and here's to an amazing season. <laughs> I hate goodbyes. Don't say that. It's too early, Leah. Too There's early. no chance. Too early, too early. I just feel for Coach Norman Black. I, I feel for Leah. Too. I feel for <laughs> Leah too. It's holding back her tears right now. Yeah, she's in on the verge, I suppose. And she wants to go out with a smile. I have to say a wonderful smile. All right, let me say something to make her feel better. Under four minutes, this is just 11 points. And you know what? I'll be the first one to say I have seen stranger things happen. Oh yes in the UAAP or in all of the leagues that uh, I have covered too. And you just cannot give up on the pride of this Athenians boom. They simply, definitely will refuse to lose. And uh, Coach Norman Black, I thought, did a tremendous job oh, yeah. for this team. Oh, yeah. There were not much expectations, especially when they lost two of their first three games. But they've uh, racked up pretty much like the longest streak this season, close to seven games. Seven, actually. Winning they streak. match uh, FEU's winning streak. But, Boom, I hate to say this. If they look at this season, they will only look at one game, the USD game. Had they won that, they would have gotten that second seed and a twice to beat advantage. 325 remaining. 65 52. Just imagine the beer conversations later on tonight. Oh, yes. <laughs> Babalikan mo lahat yan, Bumi. Joseph Yo with an impossible oh, shot yeah. over Jonathan oh, Aguilar, and he oh, says God. it's over. He gives the sign, then it's over. The Ninja has scored 26 points. And what a time for him to score the big numbers. He scored 30 against NU, 28 against USD. And today, the final four game, 26. And under three minutes to play, Joseph Yo is the man. You know, that's the only way to attack Japit Aguilar. You go up and then you have to execute an under shot. You know, Bonbon Custodio did it over Japet Aguilar the other day, the wraparound shot. Mackie will shoot the three, that's short. What you saw earlier, by the way, was L.A. Tenorio on the floor. He was crying. I don't think he's coming back in this game. Now he's back on the bench, but 
I think the spirits are broken. I saw Baji shake the hand of LA. These are two players who are now graduating and are not returning together with Magno Membrere for Ateneo. And this has got to be such an emotional moment for them. Wow. And again, Ooh. a trip into the program of LaSalle. This will be their 12th trip in the last 10, 13 years, boom. Last two minutes brought to you by Samson. With Samson, it's not hard to imagine. And I'm sure my LaSalle friends, Colin Rodriguez and uh, Chita Arwega, are very happy with this impending victory of this De La Salle University. I will repeat what I said at the top of the coverage, the pregame. LaSalle, since 1994, has had a nine... Or since 1994, has had... Whoa! The twice to beat advantage, nine out of 11 times. And they never relinquish that. So make that 10 out of 12 and a 100% batting average for LaSalle with a twice to beat advantage. A lot of things have been said to the greatness of Franz Pumarin as the leader of this team and also to his assistants. Si Chuck uh, Santiago, Tunichi Turi. But not much has been mentioned about the trainer, Dan Rosco. He has been the factor, the biggest factor in the conditioning of this team. Yes. And you just have to give credit uh, what to the Joe. What a moment. Joseph Yo going back to the finals. Franz Pumare looking for his sixth championship and seven finals appearance let's give you our best play brought to you by samson with samson it's not hard to imagine and it's definitely not hard to imagine when you have joseph yo executing circus shots like that coach france pomaren going for his 110th win in the UAAP, and it seems like he's not stopping. He wants it at 112, Ryan. <laughs> he wants it at 112. But this year is over. And may I just reply to Julia that it is also a, it was also a pleasure working oh, yes. with her. 40 seconds remaining. This game and this score does not reflect how the game was played, Ryan. Right, look at Magno Membrere. He's just kicking from downtown. He's just shooting. It's his last game for the UAP and for Ateneo. Magno Membrere is not giving up. He's still shooting away. But the lead might be... They say during the Ateneo La Salle match that you throw away the numbers, you throw away statistics. But Ryan, as an analyst and as a coach, you cannot deny the numbers. 21 turnovers for Adams for Ateneo, 12 only for LaSalle. 24 turnover points for LaSalle, 6 only for Ateneo. 13 offensive rebounds, 12 second chance points, all in favor of LaSalle. As we also look at this assist that bested them all. What a delivery by Yo to Meyerhofer, the assist of the game delivered by KFC. KFC also delivers what you're craving for. Just dial KFC delivery at 887-8888. So going back to your point, I thought Ateneo did a uh, decent job in the first two quarters, watching their, their turnovers and the way they allowed only four turnover points. But the thing is, they became complacent right after the halftime break. They were a different team altogether once again, while for LaSalle, that was the quarter where they bounced on the uh, hapless Ateneo squad. You've mentioned it, 28 to 11. Pretty much, that was the turning point of this ballgame, the third quarter onslaught of De La Salle. 14 of that 28 points coming from Joseph Yo. L.A. Tenorio, the story, 25-22 was the lead at halftime, with L.A. scoring huge bunch of points 11 in the third quarter for 15 all in all in the first half in the second quarter rather 15 all in all in the first half joseph yo our best player of the game brought to you by gatorade there's no doubt about it the numbers speak for themselves and i think yo is uh well he's joking in front of uh ryan aranya right now they're joking they're, they're teasing ryan aranya to dance <laughs> again i don't think he wants to get another technical Nag-iba na, nag na yung persona nito si Ryan Aranya. Medyo naging meek and humble siya in today's ballgame. <laughs> he usually is. When you get to talk to him, he is. It's when he's on the court that he becomes ferocious. And Yo sends it out to Aranya. Franz Buaren 
and the rest of LaSalle will, when it comes to the head-to-head, -to -head -to -head, will become 33 to 20, LaSalle leading. France Pumarin's record against LaSalle's 18 to 9, against Atenea rather 18 to 9, and in the postseason, 7 to 4. If you're, you know, one of those number addicts and you want to jot that down, more information. But Gita Rosario earlier on the screen graduates from Ateneo. Coach Norman Black, his first year for Ateneo. Seven game winning streak was the highlight of season 68 for him. A rough start. But La Salle, and again, the story of this team, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And we talk about La Salle as Ken Baraposo did not see the floor today. You talk about Lasal finishing strong, not only in the game, but also in the season. Oh yes, 4-3 and three in the first round, 6-1 and one in the second round. What more can you ask for? While on the other hand, ito na mga Ateneo, another disappointing season for them. If uh, they look at the situation we're in, they were not able to go to the finals. But still, Coach Norman Black, as I've mentioned earlier, did wonders for this team. When you take a look at the lineup of Ateneo, nobody will think that they will end up third place. But they've done that, and it is just a uh, an improvement of what they have uh, accomplished last year. The last shot, fittingly, Final score, 15, back to Membrere, shooting his last attempt for his UAP career. But for the De La Salle Green Archers, Joseph Yo and the rest of the gang, they will march to another finals appearance. And they will try to defend a crown that have held all throughout there. Coach Franz Fumarin going for time.